Hello, beautiful souls. So today's been a day of beautiful sunshine over here, enjoying the beach and all the presence and stillness and joy with each other in between. So grateful. <laughs> and today's lesson I'm also grateful for. Grateful for. Lesson 161, give me your blessing, holy son of God. Give me your blessing, holy son of God. <laughs> So let's see what this lesson has in store for all of us today. Hmm. Today we practice differently and take a stand against our anger that our fears may disappear and offer room to love. Here is salvation in the simple words in which we practice with today's idea. Here is the answer to temptation, which can never fail to welcome in the Christ where fear and anger had prevailed before. Here is atonement made complete. The world passed safely by and heaven now restored. Here is the answer of the voice of God. Complete abstraction is the natural condition of the mind but part of it is now unnatural. It does not look on everything as one. It sees instead but fragments of the whole. For only thus could it, in, for only thus could it invent the partial world you see. The purpose of all seeing is to show you what you wish to see. All hearing but brings to your mind the sounds it wants to hear. And this is crucial. We will see what we want to see. We will hear what we want to hear. That doesn't necessarily mean we're seeing and hearing the truth. <laughs> right? We hear and see according to how the mind directs. And since the ideas in our mind leave not their source, either the mind is directed by the teacher of ego or directed by the teacher of the voice of God. So we are being clear here. Thus were specifics made. And now it is specifics we must use in practicing. We give them to the Holy Spirit that he may employ them for a purpose which is different from the one we gave to them. Yet he can use but what we made to teach us from a different point of view so we can see a different use in everything. And that is the Holy Spirit's purpose, to take everything that we taught ourselves, to take everything that we think that we want and show it to us from a different point of view, to allow us to see everything with a completely see it completely differently than we ever did before. But our willingness must be there to realize that the way in which we currently see the world and the way in which we currently hear things taking place in this world is not the kind of vigilance that the Holy Spirit would use. So we can take everything that we're currently thinking and what we currently think we want to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can show it to us differently so that we see it through the eyes of love and not the eyes of fear. One brother is all brothers. One brother is all brothers. Every mind contains all minds, for every mind is one. Such is the truth. Yet do these thoughts make clear the meaning of creation? Do these words bring perfect clarity with them to you? What can they seem to be but empty sounds? Pretty perhaps corrupt in sentiment, yet fundamentally not understood nor understandable. The mind that taught itself to think specifically can no longer grasp abstraction in the sense that it is all-encompassing. We need to see a little that we learn a lot. <laughs> we need to see a little in order to learn a lot. So when we see even a little through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, we learn a lot because the abstraction of God's kingdom is all-encompassing. It is all-encompassing and includes everything. But through the mind that thinks that it is separate and does not see that one brother is all brothers is not going to be able to understand the truth of the, that these words bring. And so that's why we let the Holy Spirit show to us the truth that the words one brother is all brother. Every mind contains all minds for every mind is one and what that truly, truly means for us. It seems to be the body that we feel limits our freedom, 
makes us suffer, and at last puts out our life. Yet bodies are but symbols of a concrete form of fear. Fear without symbols calls for no response, for symbols can stand for the meanings. Love needs no symbols, being true. But fear attaches to specifics, being false. <laughs> so love needs no symbols to be understood. We don't have to and can't look into this world and look to the things of form and believe that that is going to, to mean anything about love because love is beyond form. But it is fear that needs us to be caught on form. It attaches to specifics, specific people, specific bodies, specific events, specific situations, specific things. And it makes us think that that is what is true when really the fear and the specifics is what is false. Bodies attack, but minds do not. This thought is surely reminiscent of our text, where it is often emphasized. This is the reason bodies easily become fear's symbols. You have many times been urged to look beyond the body, for its sight presents the symbol of love's enemy. Christ's vision does not see. The body is the target for attack, for no one thinks he hates a mind. Yet what but mind directs the body to attack? What else could be the seat of fear except what thinks of fear? And this is crucial. The body's eyes is going to look to the body and thinks that it hates the body. But really what it's hating is it's hating the mind because the cause is of the mind. Everything originates in the mind. You can't hate a body or something outside of yourself unless the thought is, is provided for you there. So when the thought is provided for us there and we believe that it is true, that's when we get caught on the specifics of the body and thinking the specifics of this body is what causes us pain. But it's not that at all. It's a thought in our mind about that body that causes us the pain. So here's where our release is. Jesus is reminding us here that hate is specific. Hate is specific. There must be a thing to be attacked. An enemy must be perceived in such a form he can be touched and seen and heard and ultimately killed. When hatred rests upon a thing, it calls for death as surely as God's voice proclaims there is no death. Fear is insatiable, consuming everything its eyes behold, seeing itself in everything, compelled to turn upon itself and to destroy. Yes, fear sees fear everywhere <laughs> because that is what fear is in the mind. It's in your mind, you're going to see it outside of yourself. But who sees a brother as a body sees him as fear symbol. Who sees a brother as a body sees himself as fear symbol. And he will attack, because what he beholds is his own fear external to himself, poised to attack, and howling to unite with him again. Mistake not the intensity of rage projected fear must spawn. It shrieks in wrath, and claws the air in frantic hope it can reach to its maker and devour him. That's it. Fear is insane. The mind of ego is insane. It will do anything to attack, and the intensity of rage that is project projected through the fear is massive. It is massive. And so that's why we must learn to look beyond the body, because the body is a symbol of fear. And fear is synonymous with the ego. The ego runs the mind and runs the being that thinks that it is a body. Right? So we're, we're, we're triumphing over this entire idea that we are this body, but remembering that we are one in God. We are Christ. We are brothers and sisters here. And we can't possibly be separate. Bodies are the symbol of separation. They are the symbol of fear. And that is not our true reality. So we're looking beyond that today. This do the body's eyes behold in one whom heaven cherishes, the angels love, and God created perfect. God created us perfect. This is his reality. 
And in Christ's vision is his loveliness reflected in a form so holy and so beautiful that you could scarce refrain from kneeling at his feet. Yet you will take his hand instead, for you are like him in the sight that sees him thus. And that's it. The sight of Christ's vision, the sight of seeing our brothers truly, brings us to our knees in humbled gratitude. For in seeing our brother in his holiness, so do we see ourselves. Attack on him is enemy to you, for you will not perceive that in his hands is your salvation. If we attack a brother, we're attacking ourselves because we are not seeing that in him, in his hands is our salvation. If you are intent on reaching it, you will succeed today. If you are intent on reaching it, you will succeed today. You will succeed if this is your intent. And once you have succeeded, you will not be willing to accept the witnesses your body's eyes call forth. So no longer will what the body's eyes see mean anything. And no longer will what the physical ears hear mean anything. None of it will mean anything because you have now succeeded in accepting salvation for yourself and therefore accepting Christ's vision and seeing only holiness here instead of what the body's eyes tell us is here. And so, ask him but for this, and he will give it to you. Ask Jesus for salvation, and he will give it to you. Ask him not to symbolize your fear. Would you request that love destroy itself? Or would you have it be revealed to you and set you free? Love can set you free. Today we practice in a form we have attempted earlier. Your readiness is closer now. And you will come today near Christ's vision. If you are intent on reaching it, you will succeed today. And once you have succeeded, you will not be willing to accept the witnesses your body's eyes call for. What you will see will sing to you of ancient melodies you will Remember, you were not forgotten in heaven. Would you not remember it? You are not forgotten in heaven. Would you not remember it? Select one brother, symbol of all the rest, and ask salvation of him. See him first as clearly as you can in the same form to which you are accustomed. See his face, his hands and feet, his clothing. Watch him smile and see familiar gestures which he makes so frequently. Then think of this. What you are seeing now conceals from you the sight of one who can forgive you all your sins, whose sacred hands can take the nails which pierce your own away and lift the crown of thorns which you have placed upon your bleeding head. Ask this of him, that he may set you free. Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you. So this is our intent today, to see beyond the body's eyes. Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you. And he will answer whom you called upon, for he will hear the voice of God in you and answer in your own. Behold him now whom you had seen as merely flesh and bone and recognize that Christ has come to you. Today's idea is your safe escape from anger and from fear. Be sure you use it instantly. 
should you be tempted to attack a brother and perceive in him the symbol of your fear. And you will see him suddenly transformed from enemy to savior, from the devil into the Christ. Wow. So today's lesson is very practical and intense, beautiful souls. I'm sure that in reading through here, the thought of whom you are to sit with and have this experience with came to your mind. And you will be walked forth through this experience to move from the body to the Christ to the degree in which you are willing to let it happen. And so the Holy Spirit is in each and every single person on the face of this planet, no matter how horrible or kind or whatever labels or words we want to give to that person, that beyond every label that we give them and everything that we think that they've ever done to us or anybody else is the Son of God. And so let's sit with that person today and let Jesus and the Holy Spirit heal our minds by allowing our enemy to transform to the Savior and the, the devil into the Christ. For this is what the Holy Spirit offers us, the vision of truth, that we are all one brother, one in God. So give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. And so it is. I love you all.